And Dylan, we began to hear a lot of conversation about BCG. I think it was about three months ago. Why are we hearing this renewed interest now with these trials? Right. Hi, Timmy. So, first of all, it's important to note, as you said, that BCG is not new. It's a tubercul tuberculosis vaccine that has been around for 100 years next year. Particularly in Africa, it is widely used as part of our childhood vaccination programs, and it's given to babies at birth um, or very soon afterwards, right? Because of its wide use on the continent, this vaccine is actually really easily available. It's um, relatively cheap and quite safe because we've been giving it to babies. Why it is suddenly in the headlines now is because earlier this year, there was some research that got a lot of attention. Um, essentially, some, uh, some scientists uh, from New York said that Africa was seeing less COVID-19 cases than Europe and um, America because of our childhood BCG vaccine programs. Um, but this research was flimsy, as Professor Salim Abdul Karim, the chair of the COVID-19 Ministerial Advisory Committee, pointed out. It essentially compared the epidemics at different points. So in the US and Europe, they were way further ahead in their, um, in their epidemics than we were here in Africa. We were just not seeing um, as many cases as they were then at that point. So we couldn't say, we, it's not enough, um, there's not enough facts to say that we can say this conclusively. And indeed, and one of the other contentious issues that come up whenever we talk about BCG, Dylan, is the idea of trained immunity and whether that even exists. Yeah, so it's true. People are people are divided on trained immunity, and trained immunity is quite um, it's quite a, co a complicated concept, um, and it's quite confusing. So I, I can try and explain it to you um, in in terms of like in terms of tennis with an analogy, right? Okay. So if you if you go if you think of your immune system as a, as a tennis player that's learning how how to how to play, and you think of uh, the disease as a professional player. If you go up against a professional uh, opponent before training, the professional will annihilate you, right? Now, if you think of a live vaccination as, um, as your tennis coach, they teach you a range of different strokes, right, and skills to help beat your opponent regardless of what they throw at you. So if, if you always have to fight TB off with a forehand stroke, right, but your opponent throws a respiratory infection at you, your coach, which is the vaccine, has also taught you how to back, how to do a backhand stroke, right? Which will hit that respiratory infection. So essentially what trained immunity is, is that scientists believe, or some scientists believe, that vaccines can help teach our cells how to respond to multiple different infections, not just the infection that they are meant to, right? So for instance, with BCG, the vaccine protects you from TB, as you said, but some research has shown that it could potentially help with other diseases as well. In Guinea-Bissau, researchers found that BCG might actually have helped reduce deaths in babies from infections like um, sepsis and stomach bugs. And similarly, in Cape Town here, um, it's also shown that it, it could potentially help um, res upper respiratory tract infections. So it's a very technical explanation about how it works on a cellular level. Mm. But ultimately, there's promising evidence that does suggest that BCG could actually help train your immune system to respond to the multiple diseases. Um, and that is the idea that scientists are testing now with COVID-19. So okay. at this point, it's too soon to say if BCG will work or not. But hopefully in a few months down the line, those trials can help us uh, and point us in the right direction. And as you were saying earlier, the issue with BCG at this moment in relation to COVID-19 is that the one paper that was at the start of this conversation three months ago was not peer-reviewed, which raised doubt. So South Africa has got a trial going. We've got trials being done in the Netherlands and I think Australia as well. When do we expect to get some sense of whether they do indeed confirm or not that BCG can be helpful for COVID-19 patients? Yeah, so like you just said, um, even though that initial research in March that came out may not have been scientifically sound, it did point us to an idea worth pursuing, right? Um, in terms of a timeline, we're not sure. So at the moment, there are at least 11 trials underway globally looking at BCG and COVID-19. One of these trials, like you say, is actually happening here in South Africa. And that's, that trial is looking at revaccination, which is people who are receiving the vaccine who are adults already, um, and but they received it when they were children as well. Um, I just want to, it's important to note here that it, like, the World Health Organization says that there's currently no evidence, right, that's reports that BCG offers any protection against COVID-19. But that's why these trials are, are so important, and they'll help give us definitive answers. Dylan Bush, Senior Journalist at the Begisisa Centre for Health Journalism. We're all hoping for some sort of vaccine or cure where COVID-19 is concerned. Thank you for your time.